Alec, I saw this machine at Emo, which was, was that its official launch? Yeah, European debut, Emo. Okay, and then the machine, or well, you've had a machine shipped here, so yeah. you're not you're not far after, are you, to be uh, showcasing not, We had it. this one flown over, to be honest. Did you really? <laughs> Cost a fortune. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the SL7. Tell us about this machine. Does it replace anything that stars exist, uh, existing products with brand it, new? It doesn't really. It just fills a little bit of a gap in our range. So we're going to offer this as an SL7 and an SL10. Right, so what will it make? Small micro machining parts, contactor parts, those types of components. Because you used to have the uh, a 10 mil machine, didn't you? Yeah, we've still got the SR10J, so that is still um, being manufactured and, and sold. So what would be the difference from that machine to this for users that may already have the... Versatility is the big difference. Uh, the SR10J for sure can make a lot of components, but it takes a lot of engineering to attach whirlers, gear hovers, that type of thing to that machine. Uh, with this machine, because of the uh, platen arrangement, all of those attachments are just bolt on. So versatility has gone from here to here with so this model. Then tell me about the platen arrangement then. What, what's so good about that that gives you the flexibility? You've got four cartridge stations. So you've got the drilling arm that we have. That can either be a four station drilling arm or a six station drilling arm. You can have five cross working tools in there if you want. Or you can have, like I say, slotters, gear hobbers, thread whirlers. You know. Okay, now, now what's the trick to machining very small diameters? What are the important factors that you need to consider that this machine addresses? It's stability, really, um, and getting, obviously, getting the attachments very close into the guide bush, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so this really is aimed at high volumes as well, though, in those areas, would you suggest? It's gonna suit a lot of high volume parts, for sure, but I think even though it's a small structure, you know, it's a small cutting room, the, the machine's only 800 millimeters wide, we've had co customers already, you know, uh, compliment on the actual working area. It's quite big for a small machine, if that makes sense. You so can still get your hands in there, you can still change the attachments very easy. So are we likely to see machine shops in this environment, you would hope, I suppose, with, with a whole bank of these machines, getting lots of spindles, in a very, yeah. in, a, in a smaller area. Basically, that's why we've kept it below 800 millimeters wide, and any accessories we're trying to put, you know, either end of the machine rather on the back of the machine, so we keep that, that footprint, you know, as, as small as we can. And when we take into consideration some of your other technologies and machines that have advanced in recent years, a lot of the focus has been on weight, power, yeah. stability for harder materials. Is, is, is this the same? Does that matter at this size of yeah. machine? This is exactly the same. That's our, our, our USP, really. You know, um, whereas other machines might stall. You know, we make sure that we put slightly bigger motors on. We've got our dovetail uh, guideways, etc., that makes it a really rigid, robust piece of equipment. And do you have to consider these days? So many people are talking about the unmanned run and lights out machining. A lot of it isn't just the machine; it's the software, isn't it? It's yeah. it's making sure. You know, you're maintaining tolerances over long periods of time, but you get the feedback in the event that you're not. Is Star doing anything to protect um, companies when they're making precision parts in that area? Well, obviously we've got our, our Schmoozy software, which is our monitoring and operating system. So with that piece of software, you can really drill down into each and every alarm the machine does kick out, whether it's a PMC alarm, a CNC alarm, et cetera, et cetera. It even gives you all the tool life uh, remaining in the machine. So you can be watching your tablet, your smartphone, or your PC, and you know, within a couple of hours, you've got to get back in, you know, check the life of that tool. That's, that's critical, isn't it? That's brilliant. Yeah. That, that really does help out uh, machine shop owners. So no point in buying machines that, that can run unmanned yeah. and not be able to run them unmanned yeah. for the reasons you mentioned. All right, finally tell me, Alec, then, industries here where a small machine like this really will take its pride of place. Micro machining, small electronics, that type of industry, I think that type of sector really benefit from this model.